Hello everyone, please press subscribe, press follow, press the bell so you don't miss any new clips. Alchemy Emperor of the Divine Tao. Author by Flying Alone. Audio novels by novelist. Alchemy Emperor of the Divine Tao. Chapter 141. Drawing Saber in Anger. Ling Han only thought for a short while, and managed to figure out the key factor in this issue. Li Hao managed to enter Hu Yang Academy and was practically guaranteed a bright future ahead of him. The Zhu clan had to be worried that Li Hao would experience a change of heart after witnessing the dazzling and extravagant lifestyle of the imperial city, and so had Zhu Zuyi follow him here. However, this couple seemed to have finally broken through the last layer separating them, and their relationship has naturally proceeded smoothly. When Ling Han saw this, he nodded internally, happy for them as well. Big brother Ling, I kept looking for you after I entered into the academy, yet couldn't find you at all, Li Hao said, a little guilty. Ling Han laughed loudly and joked, you probably haven't spent too much time searching, right? Always lovey-dovey with Zhu Yi, and so didn't manage to find me, right? Li Hao's face turned crimson. The feelings between himself and Zhu Zuyi had only been a hazy, indistinct kind of affection and neither of them had dared to speak of their feelings openly. After reaching the imperial city, the two of them only had each other and were very far away from home, so their affections naturally increased drastically, wanting nothing more than to cling to each other at all times. Big Brother Ling, you're always such a teaser. Zhu Zuyi said, acting like a spoiled child, dispersing the awkwardness Li Hao was feeling. Li Hao smiled faintly. Li Hao was a bit wooden in character and slow in speech, while Zhu Zuyi was much livelier. The two of them would be able to compensate for one another's shortcomings. Yi, poor fool. It was at this moment that a light, Yi, was heard from behind them, and a young man quickly approached them. It was the young master of the Kong clan. When he saw Ling Han, a cold smirk appeared on his face, and he said, What a coincidence for me to see you here. He had been tricked out of a hundred silver coins by Ling Han. Though this paltry sum of money was nothing much to him, the crux of the matter was that he was displeased. However, due to the sudden interception of Zhu Kei Sin, he did not manage to find Ling Han to settle this grudge. Young Master Kong, who's this guy? A gorgeously dressed woman leaned closely into young Master Kong's arms, casting a coy glance at him. Oh, just a poor fool, young Master Kong gave a wave of his hand, looking very disdainful. Who are you calling a poor fool? Li Hao had the short temper of a young man and could not hold himself back from retorting. Young Master Kong swept a glance over Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi, and a contemptuous expression appeared on his face, as he said, You have just recently arrived at the Imperial City, haven't you? How did you know? Li Hao blurted out. Ha ha, just look at the air of a country bumpkin surrounding you, I'm sure you must have come out from some rural, out of the way place. The contempt on young Master Kong's face deepened, and as he stared at Zhu Zhu Yi, he said, However, this village girl does not look too bad. If properly dressed up, there might be still be a bit of worth playing with her. How dare you? There was no way that Li Hao could tolerate his beloved being insulted like this, and immediately raised his fist in a punch towards young Master Kong. Ah, the beautiful girl instantly screamed. Step aside. Young Master Kong shoved the beautiful girl to one side and raised his hands to receive Li Hao's attack. Peng, peng, peng. The two of them had thus come to blows. Li Hao was in the fourth layer of element gathering tier, while young Master Kong was in the fifth layer, so theoretically, young Master Kong should be stronger. However, his cultivation level was obviously built up through the use of various resources, so his martial arts foundation was not stable at all. From the look of things, young Master Kong's battle prowess was merely four stars. Thus, the two of them were at a tie. Their battle proceeded furiously, yet neither was able to get the upper hand. Ha ha ha, never thought that a village boy would be able to have a bit of ability. Young Master Kong said with a loud laugh, Country boy, how about you lend me your woman to play with for a few days? Don't think it's a loss for you. 
With my careful teaching, your woman would be able to learn a lot of different moves, and let a country boy like you taste something new. Hearing him once again insult his woman, Li Hao's eyes turned red. He drew his saber in his anger, and aimed a slash towards young Master Kong. What a good brat, you actually dare use weapons against me. Young Master Kong gave a humph, and similarly drew his sword and clashed with Li Hao. Li Hao gave a furious roar, and a flash of saber chi shot out like an enraged dragon, dancing towards young Master Kong. Young Master Kong's cultivation level of the fifth layer of element gathering tier was built up by force, so how was it possible that he would be able to defend himself against Saber Chi? Instantly, a panicked expression appeared on his face. Within a few moves, Li Hao's Saber Chi had already caused multiple wounds on his body, causing him to cry out in pain. Stop, stop, he exclaimed in fear, quickly calling a ceasefire. He was not a person with an indomitable will. Apologize. Li Hao withdrew his saber, and shouted at young Master Kong. Young Master Kong's face turned ashen. For him to actually apologize to a country bumpkin, if this was known by others, what would happen to his reputation? But this country bumpkin was obviously a rash brat. If he clashed with him head on, it was really possible that he would suffer. He was just about to temporarily humble himself in view of the situation when his eyes swept over the area, and instantly, joy appeared on his face. He called out, Big Brother Tan, save me. A tall, slender young man was slowly approaching him. This newcomer was quite handsome, and every move he made was overflowing with confidence. His name was Tan Wei Chi, and he was a young clansman of one of the middle class clans of the Imperial City. In the Imperial City, there were only eight great clans. To be qualified as a great clan, the clan needed to have a spiritual pedestal tier elite to oversee things. There were a lot more middle class clans, because they only needed a spiritual ocean tier elite in their ranks. Meanwhile, there were countless minor clans, and they only needed a gushing spring tier martial artist to be qualified as a minor clan. While young Master Kong was respectfully addressed by others, young Master, the truth was that he only came from a minor clan. The Kong clan was deeply involved in business and commerce, so although the clan did not produce many elite martial artists, they had substantial wealth and were even richer than a large number of middle class clans. Thus, young Master Kong knew quite a number of young masters from various middle class clans. This was also his capital. At first, Tan Wei Chi did not recognize young Master Kong, because the latter was really cutting a sorry figure at the moment. It was only when he took a closer look that he recognized the latter. He could not help but be shocked, and asked, Kong Wen Hui. Big brother Tan, it's me. Kong Wen Hui replied, scowling miserably. Why are you looking so miserable? Tan Wei Chi could not help but laugh out loud, for he had discovered that Kong Wen Hui's opponent was merely in the fourth layer of element gathering tier. Kong Wen Hui glared fiercely at Li Hao, and said, it's this country bumpkin. Just because he managed to form a flash of Saber Chi, he actually dares to be so arrogant in the imperial city. Oh, Tan Wei Chi glanced over at Li Hao, and a hint of disdain appeared on his face. He could tell with one glance that this was an outsider. The air of the rural countryside was practically hitting him in the face. As a member of one of the clans of the Imperial City, whether it was Kong Wen Hui or Tan Wei Chi, both had a natural kind of arrogance and pride, and looked down on anyone who came from outside the Imperial City. Country Bumpkin, Mulan and Kowtow to apologize. Tan Wei Chi immediately said darkly to Li Hao, without even asking about how the conflict between the two of them had begun. He naturally would not have any qualms about doing so. What kind of background could a mere country bumpkin have in the imperial city? Li Hao did not dare to be the slightest bit careless. The pressure that came from this person far surpassed the pressure he felt from Kong Wen Hui. The former was at least in the late stage of element gathering tier. Though his saber chi could forcibly increase his battle prowess by another star, he was still no match for the seventh layer of element gathering tier and above. Unless Tan Wei Chi was the same as Kong Wen Hui, only having the cultivation level without stable foundations as support. A mere fourth layer of element gathering tier martial artist.
I would be able to dominate you with a single finger. Tern Wei Chi humped coldly, and said haughtily, I am in the ninth layer of element gathering tier. Li Hao's expression changed drastically. Even if this newcomer's cultivation level was also without proper foundations as support, the ninth layer of element gathering tier would still have at least seven battle stars of battle prowess, and was still in the position to completely dominate over him. Big Brother Hao, let's just forget it. Zhu Zhu Yi spoke up. Although Ling Han, based on his current battle prowess, need not fear any martial artist in the ninth layer of element gathering tier, this was still the imperial city, after all. Who knows what kind of background these people come from? Alchemy Emperor of the Divine Tao. Chapter 142, Country Bumpkin. Ha 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 ha, so you people do know how you should behave. Tern Wei Chi laughed coldly, then kneel down and apologize. We can apologize, but we will definitely not kneel. Li Hao forced out through gritted teeth. This was his greatest concession, and if it was not because of Zhu Zhu Yi, he would rather fight to the death. A dark expression flickered across Tan Wei Qi's face. He had already opened his mouth, yet this brat actually dared to refuse him. Indeed, he did not dare to kill anyone. No one would dare to commit murder in the imperial city, though a fight was still fine. Even if he severely injured his opponent, with the power of the Tan clan behind him, things would still be easily smoothed over. Against a country bumpkin like this, one look at this guy and he knew that the former did not have any particularly important background, so what if he bullied and oppressed this country bumpkin? You're only seeking your own suffering like this. Turn Wei Chi humped, and the aura of an elite warrior in the ninth layer of element gathering tears swept out, pressing down on Li Hao. Li Hao gritted his teeth and forced himself to face this pressure head on, yet veins were continuously popping up on his forehead. This pressure was indeed too heavy. He he, it's alright if you don't want to kneel. As long as you let your girlfriend remove all her clothes and give us a dance. We're all forgiving people here, and we'll give you a way out, Kong Wen Hui said with a snicker. Zhu Zhu Yi shuddered. She did want to help Li Hao resolve the issue, but if she really did take off her clothes in public, how would she be able to face Li Hao in future? Oh, so you guys enjoy watching someone naked dance so much? Ling Han spoke up, a cool expression on his face. He was now angry. When he befriended someone, he would not care whether the person was strong or weak, or what kind of background they came from. They could not be stronger than how he had been in his last life, anyways. Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi had fought at his side quite a few times, so they could be considered to be old friends. A person like him, very much covered for his own people. The only reason he had not interfered previously was just because he wanted to see to what extent these two people would be seeking their own death. Ha ha. I'm only interested in watching women dance naked, not men dancing naked. Even if you want to dance naked, I will not watch it. Kong Wen Hui stared at Zhu Zhu Yi. Though there were many such beauties of this level in the imperial city, there were very few of them that were in element gathering tier. And any woman in element gathering tier in the imperial city was not a character that he could meddle with. Thus, naturally, his heart was heated and a powerful desire to conquer such a woman rose up within him. Just dance in the street like this. One hour of naked dancing, and I will consider this matter settled, Ling Han said calmly. Ha 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 ha. Turn Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui exchanged a glance, before erupting into raucous laughter. They were laughing so hard, they were practically about to tear up. This was indeed a country bumpkin. He had to be used to being arrogant in a small place, and thought that this place was also his territory. Heng. This is the imperial city. If a dragon came here, it would have to coil up. If a tiger came, it would have to lie on its stomach. Brat. You really are naive. Turn Wei Chi shook his head. I think he is more of an idiot, Kong Wen Hui insulted. Big Brother Ling, forget it. Let's just go. Zhu Zhu Yi said in a low voice. The waters in the imperial city were too deep. There were people in gushing spring and even spiritual ocean tier at every turn, definitely not people that those who had come from small places like him could trifle with. You still think you can leave? 
Kong Renhui wanted to sweep away his previous cowardly behavior, and because Tan Weichi was beside him, he said coldly, Didn't you hear me tell you to dance naked? I've changed my mind, now all three of you are to dance naked. Let's go. Don't bother with them. Zhu Zuyi and Li Hao both pulled on Ling Han's arm. They were very worried that Ling Han, with a young man's short temper, would come to blows with these two. They were local troublemakers of the imperial city after all, who knows what kind of terrifying background these two came from. However, this was still the area under the direct jurisdiction of the emperor, no matter what, they would not dare to really thrash students of Huyang Academy. Ling Han smiled, and said, where are we going? I made a promise with someone to meet inside here. He pointed at the Cherishing Flower Pavilion. Brag. Just continue to brag. Tan Weichi interrupted. Country Bumpkin, do you know what kind of place this is? This is Cherishing Flower Pavilion. Without a high enough status, no matter how much money you have, you would still be unable to step into these doors. Li Hao and Zhu Zuyi nodded internally. They have both heard of Cherishing Flower Pavilion. It was indeed a trademark of the Imperial City, and would only serve that particular group of people that were the highest on the social ladder. No matter how wealthy ordinary people were, they would not be able to enter within. But they would of course not, expose, Ling Han, though they both agreed that Ling Han must be acting stubborn. That's right. Not even I have the privilege to enter. Kong Wenhui exclaimed. Though the Kong clan was indeed very wealthy, but their strongest clansmen were only in gushing spring tier. If he wanted to enter into Cherishing Flower Pavilion, he would need to at least have the support of a spiritual ocean tier elite. Country Bumpkin, don't act stubborn anymore. Quickly take off your clothes and dance, then go back to your village to farm. He laughed loudly. Ling Han's eyes turned cold. He was now truly angered. Yi, why is young Master Han standing outside? It was at this moment that a melodious female voice was heard, and from within the cherishing flower pavilion, a crimson-haired beauty walked out. Her figure was very shapely, and she had a captivating, hypnotizing beauty to her. It was the beauty that was always by the side of the third imperial prince. Her name was Ziyan. Yo, when Kong Wenhui's eyes fell upon her, his eyes lit up. How could he know that she was someone at the side of the third imperial prince? He thought that she was one of the female attendants of the Cherishing Flower Pavilion, and could not help but say foolishly, Beauty, how much is it for a single night? He he, it's all right even if the two of us share you, right? Price is no issue. The crimson-haired beauty's eyes instantly narrowed, and a dark killing intent immediately emanated from her. Pa. Tan Weiqi's hand rose and fell, giving Kong Wenhui a heavy slap as he cursed. Bastard, if you want to die, don't drag me along with you. He quickly bowed towards the crimson-haired beauty and said, Greetings, Miss Si Yan. Kong Wenhui had no idea why he was slapped, but he was not an idiot. When he saw the drops of sweat covering Tan Weiqi's forehead, he could guess that this Miss Zi Yan came from a formidable background that was at least greater than the Tan clan behind Tan Weiqi. Zi Yan did not pay them any attention, and turned towards Ling Han instead, asking with a sweet smile, Young Master Han, do you have some kind of conflict with these two? Hiss. Tan Weiqi had already been shivering due to fear in the first place, and now his heart tightened even further. When Zi Yan called, young Master Han, the first time, he had not thought that she was addressing Ling Han because he did not know Ling Han's name. Furthermore, he did not think that a country bumpkin was worthy of being received personally by a favoured person of the third imperial prince, who even addressed him as young Master Han. Yet this time, Miss Zi Yan was facing Ling Han directly, and addressing him as such. It's over. It's all over. For even Miss Ziyan to be so respectful towards him, this was proof that this brat must have come from an overwhelmingly powerful background. Tan Weichi only felt his whole body was ready to collapse, and could not control his legs from shaking. He almost did not even have the energy left to remain standing. Kong Wenhui, on the other hand, was not so scared, because he did not know who Ziyan was. As the saying goes, ignorance is bliss. Li Hao and Zhu Zuyi were both shocked too. 
They did not know who this young woman was, but from the moment she appeared, she was able to force Tan Wei Chi to lower his head, so she must have obviously come from a terrifying background. But even so, she still had to address Ling Han as young master Han. Ling Han had only been in the imperial city for a few days, and he had already reached such a high level on the social ladder. Ling Han smiled faintly, and said, These two guys humiliated my friends. Zi Yan's beautiful face instantly turned cold, and swept her eyes over Tan Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui. The aura of a gushing spring tear elite rolled out, causing the hearts of these two to beat like crazy, almost ready to pop out of their throats. Are you not going to apologize to young Master Han and his friends? Alchemy Emperor of the Divine Tao. Chapter 143. Dance Obediently. Tan Wei Chi immediately lowered his head in apology, and said, Young Master Han, please forgive me for my blindness. Although Kong Wen Hui was displeased, when he saw that even Tan Wei Chi had bowed his head, how could he still dare to remain standing upright? He too bowed his head, and said, I was wrong. Please forgive me, young Master Han. Get lost. Ziyan shouted in rebuke and pointed. The two of them were thanking the gods for their good fortune in their hearts as they prepared to make a break for it. Who allowed you to leave? Ling Han asked. Ziyan could not help but show a sliver of displeasure on her face. She was the third imperial prince's most trusted, and in the whole imperial city, who would not greet her respectfully as Miss Zi Yan. Yet though she had already stepped out as mediator, Ling Han would still not let the matter go. Wasn't this deliberately not giving her face in public? Both Tan Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui were experts at observing the faces of others, and were instantly delighted. As long as Ling Han and Zi Yan came into conflict, then they would be immediately getting back the upper hand. Meanwhile, Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi both became anxious, nervous about the imperious way Ling Han was acting. What other command does young Master Han have? Tan Wei Chi asked respectfully. He knew that the more respectful he appeared to be now, and the more overbearing Ling Han acted, the more dislike would be incited from Zi Yan. I've already said so. The two of you dance and are naked here, and we'll forget about the matter today, Ling Han said. Young Master Han, death is better than humiliation. In terms of petty scheming, Kong Wen Hui was obviously also an expert, and immediately cooperated very well with Tan Wei Chi, deliberately showing an extremely angered expression. Who would believe that it was him who had first suggested for Zhu Zhu Yi to dance naked now? Indeed, the displeasure on Zi Yan's face deepened. She had not witnessed the incident from start to finish, and only knew what she was seeing now. Obviously, Ling Han was behaving too imperiously. However, Ling Han was someone the third imperial prince wanted very much to befriend after all, so she did not dare to offend him either. She said, Young Master Han, isn't that too much? Why not let them prepare some gifts and personally pay you a visit tomorrow to express their deepest apologies to young Master Han and your friends? We shall heed Miss Zi Yan's instructions. Tan Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui instantly nodded with respect. Big Brother Ling, let's just forget it. Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi advised as well. Ling Han was not moved, and said, there is no need for such trouble. As long as they dance naked here today, then we'll consider the matter settled. Don't go too far. I don't believe you dare to kill us. Kong Wen Hui shouted, intending to spur Ling Han into action. Ling Han smiled calmly, and said, The Empire has laws, who would dare to disobey? However, you two are only minor characters. The best option for you would be to dance obediently. Otherwise, I will rip off all your clothes and leave you to hang in this street for three days and three nights. Young Master Han, Zi Yan could not help but interrupt, a sliver of coldness appearing on her beautiful face. What is it? You disagree? Ling Han turned to look at her. Ha 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 ha, how could that be? A bout of laughter was heard, and the third imperial prince strode out, these two actually dare to delay the meeting between Brother Ling and myself. How could they simply be let off without a harsh punishment? Third Imperial Prince. Tan Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui both gasped out in shock. They had never thought that Ling Han would have such an amicable relationship with the Third Imperial Prince. 
It was only Mao that Kong Wenhui managed to guess who Zi Yan was, and could not help but shiver with fear. That was the third imperial prince, an imperial prince with real authority in his hands. In the future, it was possible that he would be inheriting the throne. Zi Yan instantly stepped back and stood behind the third imperial prince, as if she was his shadow. You've heard Ling Han's words, right? Just dance right here, the third imperial prince said calmly, yet his tone contained a severity that could not be refused. This was the aura of someone in the upper echelons of society. A pained expression appeared on Tan Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui's faces, yet they did not dare disobey. Filled with humiliation, they began to remove their clothing. Brother Ling, please, the third imperial prince said with a smile. With his status, he would of course not stay here to watch two men dance naked. Do you mind if I bring two friends along with me? Ling Han asked with a smile. Of course not. The third imperial prince answered with a laugh. Ling Han smiled at Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi, and said, If you two have nothing to do later on, would you like to join me? Can we really? Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi's heartbeats instantly sped up. That was the one and only third imperial prince. If they could share a meal with him, then who in the whole imperial city would dare to bully them in the future? Ling Han must also have thought of this, and that was why he had invited them to join him. Instantly, a strong gratitude towards Ling Han arose within the two of them. Of course, you can, Ling Han said with a smile. Many thanks, big brother Ling. Many thanks, third imperial prince. Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi both said in unison, and looked at Ling Han with heated gazes. This guy had just come to the imperial city for a few days, and he was already an honored guest of the third imperial prince. He was really too awesome. The five of them turned around and stepped into the cherishing flower pavilion. As for the pitiful Tan Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui, they continued their naked dancing on the street. Even though the third imperial prince and the others were no longer here, they dared not take the chance to run off. Otherwise, if the third imperial prince insisted on pursuing the matter, that would really become something very serious. Two sturdy men taking off their clothes in public. As they removed each piece of clothing, they continued to dance. This was indeed a rare spectacle, which instantly attracted the attention of passers-by to gather around them and watch. How offensive, to actually dance naked here. He he. Most importantly, the dancers are two men. If it was two beautiful girls, then it would be a much more pleasing sight. J. Just look at their two little dick, they aren't even half as big as mine. Forget it. If you expose your dick in front of so many people, who knows, maybe it would even shrink so much that it'd be smaller than theirs. Is there anyone to take care of this issue? Two sturdy men dancing naked in a busy street like this, if this was seen by little kids, wouldn't it be very inappropriate? The spectators began to mock, causing Tan Wei Chi and Kong Wen Hui feel like they wanted to cry. Big brother Tan, what do we do now? Kong Wen Hui asked miserably. It was not only he who was being shamed now, but this matter would definitely implicate the clan behind him, and cause their Kong clan to become the butt of jokes. In the future, his status within the clan would definitely experience a drastic drop as a result of this incident. Shut up. Tan Wei Chi looked like he was ready to commit murder. If it was not because of Kong Wen Hui, how would he have fallen to this level? He hated Ling Han, yet he hated Kong Wen Hui even more. Seeing two sturdy men moving their twisting around into different poses, the spectators erupted into loud laughter. After entering into the Cherishing Flower Pavilion, Ling Han completely put Kong Wen Hui and Tan Wei Chi to the back of his mind. He was not so petty to keep holding a grudge against two such minor characters. Of course, if the two of them still had not given in after today, then what awaited them would be a thunderous crackdown. The third imperial prince had reserved a side courtyard, and many guests had already arrived by now. When they looked at Ling Han, curiosity arose on all their faces as they all began to guess at his background. He was someone that the third imperial prince not only sent out Miss Zi Yan to receive, but even the third imperial prince would personally step out to receive. Come, come, come. Let me introduce to all of you. 
This is Ling Han, brother Ling, a young friend of Fu Yuan Sheng, Grandmaster Fu, and also someone on very friendly terms with Wu Song Lin, Grandmaster Wu. When he found out that Ling Han was actually a representative of Wu Song Lin, he really got a big shock. Rain Country only had two black grade high level alchemists and they were both very close with Ling Han. Thus, the third imperial prince further dared not slight Ling Han. Hiss. The others all gasped in shock. A young friend, how could this term be so freely used? Alchemy Emperor of the Divine Tao. Chapter 144. Feng Yan has arrived. Ling Han could have become one of the trump cards in the third imperial prince's hand, but why was he so quickly playing this card? That was because it was now the most important period of the competition for the throne. The guests he had invited tonight were all the outstanding youths of various middle-class clans of the imperial city. If they were to declare their loyalty towards him, that would be equivalent to getting the approval of their clans. Don't underestimate these clans. A few hundred middle-class clans united together could have quite a bit of influence. Most importantly, the eight great clans were much too outstanding. Whichever imperial prince was crowned as emperor, they were still the eight great clans, neither advancing nor degrading. On the other hand, every reign emperor would still have to play well the role of mediator to maintain the peace between the eight great clans. This was the responsibility of their reign. As a result, it was impossible to pull any of the eight great clans into his camp. Thus, the third imperial prince could only place his focus on the middle class clans. Why were there only 30 odd people tonight? That was because the other middle class clans have already been divided between his camp, the eldest imperial prince, and the seventh imperial prince. The only ones left were these clans that had still not yet decided whom to support, and were waiting for the best offer. Lastly, whichever imperial prince ascended to the throne, the clans that had supported the wrong camp would definitely be pushed aside by the other clans. It wouldn't even be impossible for them to be forced out of the imperial city in secret. When they heard that Ling Han actually had two black grade high level grandmaster alchemists behind him, everyone could not help but reveal expressions of astonishment. That was too awesome, wasn't it? However, due to the outstanding status of alchemists, they usually would not interfere in any power struggle on their own initiative. Now, looking at the very friendly relationship between Ling Han and the third imperial prince, did that mean that the third imperial prince had gained the support of these two ultimate grandmaster alchemists? Heavens, that would be desperately serious. With the support of these two awesome bosses behind him, even if the current reign emperor already had a candidate in mind for the position of his heir, he would probably have to reconsider his decision so as to avoid these two ultimate grandmaster alchemists not cooperating and making things difficult for the imperial family when the new emperor was crowned. In the competition for the imperial throne, the third imperial prince had a slightly higher chance to emerge victorious in the first place, and now, all of a sudden, two great bosses emerged to support him, he was practically guaranteed to win. With such thoughts, these young people instantly became very passionate, and humbled themselves to the lowest extent. At first, Although they were in the position of subjects, there was still an air of pride in their bones because he was the one who wanted to pull them into his camp. But things were different now. Now that they knew the third imperial prince's trump card, these people took the initiative to become closer with him. They were both black grade high level alchemists. If the two of them simply threw out any kind of alchemical medicine, it would be enough for them to go crazy over. When the third imperial prince saw this scene, a smile turned up the corners of his lips. This was exactly what he wanted to see. He could not wait to play this card, because the current reign emperor had the intention to abdicate from his throne to put all his focus on his studies of martial arts. At most within five years' time, the emperor wanted to have his heir inherit the throne, so the third imperial prince had to make the most of his time. Ha 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 ha, let us all drink. The third imperial prince raised his wine cup and instantly, everyone else raised theirs as well. When the third imperial prince drained his cup, the others would naturally not dare to leave wine in their own cups, and drained theirs as well. After the third imperial prince sat, they all returned to their seats. 
The third imperial prince was now fully content with his achievements. This place was only the cherishing flower pavilion, but in the near future, in the imperial court, there would be even more high-ranking persons paying him respect and subjecting to his rule. The female attendants began to replenish the wine in everyone's cups. Why was the cherishing flower pavilion so expensive? That was because these female attendants were not only astonishingly beautiful, but had very elegant bearing. Some of them were even in element gathering tier, and for men to have these female attendants to accompany them in drinking fulfilled men's natural inherent desire to conquer. Ling Han was the brightest star tonight. He had a beauty at either side accompanying him to drink, and both were in element gathering tier. One had to know that both these beauties were young women in their twenties, yet they had already stepped into element gathering tier. They were outstandingly talented in the first place, but at the same time, they also needed a large amount of resources to be able to reach this level. These two women have both undergone strict training, and they spoke very gently and moved very lightly and elegantly. What was even more remarkable was that they were very good at observing the facial expressions and movements of others. Ling Han needed only to cast a look, and they would know which dish Ling Han wanted to sample, and immediately, they would take the initiative to deliver a bite-sized portion of the said dish into Ling Han's mouth. Such a rapturous array was definitely enough to cause any young man to lose all composure, and easily fall into such a gentle trap. However, what kind of mental strength did Ling Han have? As the saying goes, he could pass into a field of flowers, yet not one leaf would cling to his figure. His heart would not be disturbed by any woman, no matter how beautiful she was. He did not maintain any reservations either, and only peacefully enjoyed the service of these two women. Yet his eyes remained clear, and there was no sign of shock on his face, causing the third imperial prince, who had kept one eye on him, to look even higher upon him. The third imperial prince even had the delusion that the person he was looking at was not a youth in his teens, but an ultimate warrior who had experienced multiple hardships and witnessed countless great spectacles. Ling Han had the support of the two great bosses of alchemy behind him, so naturally he became someone who everyone wanted to gain the favor of. However, Ling Han seemed to have no intention to pay too much attention to these people. He would only occasionally speak with the third imperial prince, Li Hao, and Zhu Zhu Yi. The rest of the time, he would simply concentrate on enjoying his meal. This was very normal. In his last life, he was the one and only alchemy emperor, so how could he have the patience and mood to deal with these little brats who thought that they were so extraordinary? None of the others thought that there was anything strange about the proud way that Ling Han was acting, because alchemists were indeed such proud people in the first place. If Ling Han did not show such prideful behavior, they would think that it was odd instead. When they saw that Ling Han was not so easily approachable, they naturally turned their attention to Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi. They all earnestly sought the company of these two, causing Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi to feel overwhelmed. Just now, a mere young master from a minor clan would dare to insult and humiliate them, yet now, there were so many young masters from middle-class clans all fighting to befriend them. The two of them could not help but look at Ling Han with gratitude. All of this was because of Ling Han. The third imperial prince saw that Ling Han only ate and drank, and was not like the others who took the opportunity to pour at the female attendants beside them, and asked, Brother Ling, are you not satisfied with these two beauties? When they heard these words, these two beauties instantly revealed resentful expressions, their lovely appearances very moving. Even if one knew very well that they were only playing along, one could not help but feel tender towards them. Ha ha, if Brother Ling thinks they are not tender enough, then why not have Ziyan accompany you? The third imperial prince asked suddenly. Ziyan's face instantly changed, and her body shook slightly. Her eyes were filled with resentment. She was not putting on a show, but really feeling heartbroken. She had thought that she had a high place in the third imperial prince's heart, but never thought that she was still only a card that he could play. Li Hao and Zhu Zhu Yi's hearts both sped up at this. Previously, Zi Yan had been so grand and impressive in front of them, yet now, she would still have to accompany Ling Han to drink. This gap was really too big for them to accept. 
Ling Han smiled and asked, Are you willing, Miss Zi Yan? Zi Yan's figure shook again, but she answered, Zi Yan is willing. Yet Ling Han shook his head and said, A gentleman will not take someone else's favorite. Miss Zi Yan belongs to the Third Imperial Prince, so it's best if you stay by the Third Imperial Prince's side. Zi Yan instantly looked grateful at this. She would naturally not dare to disobey the Third Imperial Prince's command, but if she was able to escape from this calamity, her impression of Ling Han improved greatly. However, she also gained a new understanding of the Third Imperial Prince. In view of the throne, anyone would only be the pawns that he could use, and if she continued to follow at his heels so blindly, what kind of ending awaited her? She was obviously at a loss. Ha 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 ha, Third Imperial Prince, I have come late. May I enter? It was at this moment that a clear voice was heard from outside, and this voice had a very strong air to it. The Third Imperial Prince's expression changed slightly, and exclaimed, Feng Yang. Alchemy Emperor of the Divine Tao. Chapter 145, Tyrant. Ling Han has heard of the name, Feng Yan, many times. When he was at Seven Winds Mountains and encountered Feng Luo, that was the first time he had heard of Feng Yan, and the latter was very much revered by Li Hao and the others. After that, during the Da Yuan tournament, the name Feng Yan was frequently mentioned as well. That was the name of a genius who could make geniuses like Qi Yongyi, Li Dong Yue, and the others pale in comparison. After he had arrived at Huyang Academy, he found out that this person's ability qualified him to rank within the top 10 strongest true disciples, and may even be qualified to challenge the only three core disciples of the academy. Because of Feng Luo, there was no way he would be able to avoid coming into conflict with Feng Yan. And tonight, they had finally met. Ha ha, no matter what time Brother Feng is here, I will definitely come to receive you, the Third Imperial Prince said in a loud voice, laughing. Ziyu, a figure suddenly shot into the side courtyard. The figure was a tall, slender young man with clearly shaped eyebrows and bright eyes. He had a head of thick, black locks, and it seemed as if there was a holy light enveloping his entire body, emanating a very pale light that would cause anyone who saw him to be enchanted by him. Ling Han's eyes suddenly narrowed. Seventh layer of gushing spring tear. Before the new year, wasn't this man only in the third layer of gushing spring tear? How could it be that he had suddenly broken through four whole layers in a mere two months' time? This was even more awesome than Ling Han himself. This guy must have gotten some kind of colossal fateful encounter. Otherwise, who would be able to surpass Ling Han with the perfect combination of his alchemical pills to support his cultivation, his heaven-grade spirit base, and heaven-grade cultivation techniques in terms of cultivation speed? Feng Yan, a man that was widely known among the young generation of Rain Country, and someone that no one dared to underestimate. This man had a high chance to enter into spiritual pedestal tier one day and become one of the ultimate warriors of Rain Country. Brother Feng, the third imperial prince stood up and raised his clasped hands in Feng Yan's direction. Though he had a higher cultivation level than Ling Han, he did not have the divine sense that Ling Han had retained from his last life as an ultimate warrior of heaven tier. Additionally, he was quite far away from Feng Yan, and so could not identify the latter's cultivation level. Moreover, who would observe another's cultivation level for no reason? Your Imperial Highness, Feng Yan Tu raised his clasped hands, and swept his eyes over all those present, then said, I have come so boldly here tonight because firstly, I wish to greet your Imperial Highness, and secondly, I heard that the person who framed my younger brother and almost caused him to be expelled from the academy is also present here tonight. As he spoke his last words, his gaze stopped and focused on Ling Han. Obviously, he had recognized Ling Han. The third imperial prince was stunned at first, before a raging fire was lit inside his heart. Feng Yan was obviously here to seek vengeance. But, the problem now was that this was a banquet that he was hosting, and Feng Yan actually came to make trouble. How much face was Feng Yan not giving him? Indeed, he looked very highly upon Feng Yan, but the latter was still a mere martial artist at the end of the day. 
Honestly speaking, Feng Yan's cultivation level was lower than his own, and what he looked highly upon was Feng Yan's future potential to become stronger. In terms of background, the Feng clan only had martial artists of gushing spring tier, and in terms of personal ability, Feng Yan was only in the third layer of gushing spring tier. What right did Feng Yan have not to give him any face at all? In the heart of the third imperial prince, Ling Han who had two major bosses of alchemy behind him was obviously far more important than Feng Yan, so he decided to fully support Ling Han without any hesitation. He said, Brother Feng, I was also present during that incident, and I can definitely guarantee that it was your brother who intended to frame Ling Han. Yet Ling Han frowned, because he heard Feng Yan's words, almost caused him to be expelled from the academy. So, that meant that Feng Luo was still currently at the academy. What was going on? He wanted to deal with an old pervert, yet encountered trouble. Now, he wanted to kick Feng Luo out of the academy, and here comes Feng Yan, who used some kind of unknown means to pull Feng Luo back in. Heng, the academy has already investigated that it was the sole responsibility of Wei Hila. It was he who had stolen the badge that I lent to Feng Luo. Wei Hila has had a previous conflict with Ling Han, and so framed my brother, Feng Yan said darkly. Fuck, how could he be so shameless? Everything was obviously planned by Feng Luo, yet why had he suddenly become the victim according to his brother? Right or wrong was so easily overturned by Feng Yan. Yet Ling Han was not the slightest bit angered. History was always written by the victors, and in this world, the real authority in valid argument was decided by the strength of one's fists. What he did not understand was how could Feng Yan be so fearless when he was only in the seventh layer of gushing spring tier. One had to know that even if Feng Yan stepped into spiritual ocean tier, he was still a subject of rain country, and had not yet reached the level where he could break away from imperial authority, this would at least require spiritual pedestal tier. And if one was in flower blossoming tier, that was an existence that would stand out over all others. Feng Yan should definitely not be as idiotic as this. The third imperial prince too never thought that Feng Yan would actually dare oppose him like this. The thoughts in his head whirred quickly. Could it be that Feng Yan had sought refuge from his eldest brother or his seventh brother, and that was why he did not fear him at all? But no matter how it was, a mere subject actually dared to talk back to him publicly. This was a challenge to his authority, and something he would not tolerate. Feng Yan, take care of your words. He withdrew his smile, and his face became completely serious as a faint powerful air emanated from him. When a son of God raged, blood would flow over 10,000 miles. Though the third imperial prince was not the emperor yet, he still had limited use of power of the nation which could instantly place him in a very powerful position, as if he was an emperor, causing everyone to feel only respect and fear towards him. Your imperial highness, hand over this person to me, and I'll give you face and not kill him. Feng Yan did not show any signs of fear, and even began to announce his conditions to the third imperial prince. Silence fell over the whole area. Had Feng Yan lost his mind? That was the third imperial prince, the most powerful person in Huyang Academy. His personal ability was more than enough to dominate over Feng Yan, what more that he was an imperial prince with monstrous power in his grasp. Even if the third imperial prince was an expert in concealing his thoughts, hearing such words caused his face to twitch slightly, hinting at the powerful rage he was feeling. He took a deep breath, and suppressed these emotions, before saying calmly, you are going a bit too far. Is your imperial highness not planning to surrender this person to me? Feng Yan smiled a bit mockingly. Could it be you dare to use force right in front of me? The third imperial prince asked coldly. He was now truly furious. Everyone has the responsibility to arrest a criminal. Is your imperial highness intending to shield such a criminal? Feng Yan strode forwards, really showing absolutely no fear of the third imperial prince. How dare you? Ziyan leaped out and waved her hands. In each hand appeared a blue dagger, and she charged towards Feng Yan. Shuo, Shuo, Shuo. Blue light danced unhindered, forming a dance of daggers that filled the air, as if there was a screen of light in front of their eyes. Small tricks. 
Fung Yan humped and punched out with a fist. This punch from him was terrifyingly strong, as if a mountain was pressing down. He had just punched out, and Zi Yan's face turned completely pale, her crimson hair dancing in all directions as if a hurricane had just passed by. Peng. This punch had not yet hit her, but Zi Yan was already flung away by a powerful force. As she flew through the air, an arrow of blood followed her. This, 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 everyone was absolutely astonished at this. Feng Yan really dared to cause injury to someone. Had he gone crazy, or did he have some kind of incredible trump card hidden up his sleeve? Trash. The third imperial prince humped lowly. He was already very furious, and now one of his people was defeated with a single punch, causing him to lose control of his emotions, and unable to help but spit out this word. Ziyan looked like she had suffered a harsh blow. Her figure gave a slight shudder, and she spat out another mouthful of blood. Yet Feng Yan only stared at Ling Han, and exclaimed darkly, You are indeed very bold. End of the chapter. Alchemy Emperor of the Divine Tao will be read in five chapters for every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Please leave this sound novel and press subscribe, follow, and the bell so you don't miss any new clips as well. See you.